What if Jaegers made themselves present in the MonsterVerse? In this episode, we will analyze different scenarios where these giant mechs dared to wage war against these types of kaiju. But not just any monsters. Today, we will feature not just one, but three different titans. Kong, the G-Man, and Mechagodzilla. All with different combat philosophies, weapons, and objectives that would make each scenario unique. If this is your first time here, please remember to follow or subscribe to our channel to be the first to see epic kaiju fight content. Coming up, Pacific Rim Jaegers in the MonsterVerse! Before we start, we want to quickly show you another way you can take control of the battle, and that's with our sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. Available on mobile and PC, this game's got over 600 unique champions to play as, all from unique factions, each with their own lore. Use this link or this QR code to download. In this game, the High Elves are the faction to look out for because of their crazy story. They've been around for thousands of years, surviving the fall of the Lizardmen, helping humans form into civilizations, and defeating the Orcs. But things got twisted when a bunch of elves turned evil and attacked their own kingdom. Almost getting wiped by a civil war, the land of Aravia survived, was rebuilt, and it's now stronger than ever, ready for you to jump in and take command. This month, five new badass-looking champs will be unleashed, the Champion Vault will be overhauled, and on top of that, Raid is running a huge series of Summer Splash events this month, where you can gear up with some really cool skins for everyone's favorite dwarf, Trunda. But there's one more thing. Yeah, something cool is about to happen, so make sure you get in now if you want to witness this. New players can use this link in the description or scan the code to get a free starter pack worth almost $30, a free champion, Aina, and this in-game loot. You'll find your rewards here in your inbox. Thanks to Raid for their continued support for the channel. And now, let's see some Jaeger action! Before we throw our Jaegers against our MonsterVerse Kaiju, we need to first understand what these things really are, why they were built, and how they physically compare against MonsterVerse Titans. These mechanized giants are featured in Pacific Rim. In this cinematic universe, Earth is attacked from within by super-intelligent alien lifeforms that unleash massive sea monsters via underwater portals and attack populated areas. After seeing that nuking these creatures only led to self-destruction, the United Nations greenlighted an initiative to build massive human-shaped mechs which would leverage human mobility, dexterity, and intelligence, and amplify these abilities on a larger scale, enough to fight monsters in hand-to-hand -hand combat. By fighting them in this manner, humanity would no longer have to use nukes and destroy their own cities. Building these could come at a massive cost, however. For example, just one of these could cost up to $100 billion, and some are rumored to cost a lot more. But how big are these compared to MonsterVerse Kaiju? These Jaegers varied in size, from 230 to up to 280 feet in height. In terms of weight, these were a lot lighter than anticipated. Now, admittedly, the official weights for these Jaegers are all over the place, some ranging from 2,000 tons to up to 7,000 tons. For the purposes of making these as realistic as possible in this video, we will align with the higher-end figures provided. By comparing the physical proportions of an average Jaeger to our MonsterVerse opponents, we have a massive gap in terms of weight and height, meaning that it would be illogical for a single Jaeger to successfully defeat any of these three titans with ease. All three of these titans, especially Mechagodzilla, would have a massive height advantage over any of these Jaegers. Not to mention that a single swipe of these extremely heavy kaiju would pack enough force to destroy a Jaeger with a single hit. Especially since all of these kaiju here have some serious upper body strength. The only way to make these scenarios at all interesting will be by assigning a number of Jaegers to take on these kaiju. Not a 1v1 match, but a squad of these to carry on an assault against our MonsterVerse contestants. Now that we have a clearer picture of how these Jaegers could perform, let us now start analyzing our first battle scenario. Number 1. Jaegers vs. Kong We will begin with a kaiju whose best strengths include high problem-solving skills, high dexterity, mobility, and weapon-wielding capabilities. Defeating a titan such as this will require immense upper body strength and definitely handheld weapons that can counter its own. 
Unfortunately for the Jaeger program, it has a plethora of mechs with different types of handheld weapons that could possibly aid in inflicting damage to Kong. By housing humans inside a mech, this will allow these pilots to literally know what it would feel like to fight Kong just as if they were fighting another human. Except Kong is far superior. Compared to an average Jaeger build, Kong is much more robust, wider, and not only that, he has proven to be one of the most intelligent titans in the MonsterVerse. In terms of combat ability, almost as intelligent as a human. Knowing this, we can rule out the possibility of a single Jaeger defeating Kong. We will need a lot more. For this specific fight, we think the most important factors to consider is 1. Dexterity, 2. Mobility, and 3. Intelligence. In terms of dexterity, both humans and Kong will be able to wield handheld weapons. Kong just happens to be a master at this sort of thing. Once vastly outnumbered, an intelligent titan like Kong would quickly look for anything that would give him the edge before he engages in close combat. Anything, such as his axe for instance, would immediately give Kong the edge in handheld weapons, as there is absolutely no weapon possessed by any Jaeger that could successfully counter this axe. This weapon alone is estimated to be approximately 207 feet in length, more than two-thirds the length of the largest Jaegers. Imagine someone hurling an extremely heavy axe at you, the results would be catastrophic. This weapon, with these swing speeds, would be able to send a single Jaeger flying or potentially cut it in half. Dispatching Jaegers in this form would only mean that Kong would quickly be able to render down a squadron of Jaegers to half their number. In order to defeat Kong, the remaining Jaegers would have to resort to their numbers and strategy. One thing that Kong has a serious advantage over the Jaegers in is mobility. Now it's important to note that not all of these are created equal. Some Jaegers, such as the Mark VI seen in Pacific Rim Uprising, were a lot more agile than its predecessors. But compared to Kong, these pale in comparison. Jaegers do not have a leap ability like Kong does, meaning that in terms of movement, Kong would easily be able to pick these off one by one by flanking them and taking them out on their weaker sides. The only way to defeat this creature would be by teamwork, and a clever use of some of their better weapons, such as the Arc Whip capable of lassoing Kong's appendages, disabling a limb for some time. Or furthermore, the use of a gravity sling, a weapon capable of hurling objects at Kong, leveraging centrifugal force. A constant barrage of objects hurled at a distance would potentially weaken this titan. But then again, Kong's ability to throw back these objects would cancel this out, leaving the Jaegers with little to no chance of defeating this titan. A giant ape with supernatural leaping abilities, immense strength, dexterity, and intelligence grants the MonsterVerse its first win. Though realistically, if any kaiju were to side with humans, it would have been Kong. So in a real-life situation, we would most likely never see this happen. Up next, humanity will face a titan who will voluntarily attack humanity if provoked. Number 2. Jaegers vs. The G-Man after a crushing defeat against Kong, the Jaegers now have to switch their attention to a titan that, if provoked, could unleash calamity and destruction to all humanity. Godzilla! Now picking a fight with a massive 390-foot-tall kaiju with atomic weapons will be no easy task. Especially since this kaiju is a whopping 99,000 tons, more than 13 times the weight of a single Jaeger, assuming Jaegers were actually that heavy. To put this into weight perspective, this would be the same as a 160-pound person fighting against approximately 13 overweight house cats. Except you're armed with atomic ray weaponry, and they aren't. If you were a Jaeger pilot, you would now have the honor of being able to combat Godzilla in hand-to-hand -hand combat at a larger scale. But you're not alone. Now, how would the Jaegers fare against such odds? To begin, let's bring out some of the most important factors to consider. Ranged weaponry, overall strength, and corporal builds. In the past, we have seen the G-Man go up against different enemies. In 1v1 confrontations, Godzilla proves to be a champion in single-hand combat. But against many foes, Godzilla will struggle a bit more. This time, the G-Man will now face an entire squadron of Jaegers. So the best thing we can do to simulate the outcome is to think like Godzilla. 
We know this guy has a solid strategic acumen and will try to exploit any advantage he can before engaging in hand-to-hand -hand combat. As Godzilla sees these approaching, he will most likely be met with a barrage of explosive weaponry. In response, Godzilla will deploy atomic breath and will attempt to wipe out as much of the opposing squadron as possible since he's severely outnumbered. Can Godzilla destroy Jaegers at range? Yes. This atomic blast is so powerful that against much lighter opponents, these would literally be sent flying or simply obliterated due to the blast. Once seeing that long-range combat is detrimental, the Jaegers would have to close in and fight Godzilla as one. Which brings us to our next attributes, strength and builds. A 99,000-ton kaiju equipped with extremely strong upper and lower body strength would be able to easily dismantle the smaller Jaegers with ease using its jaws and sharp-tipped claws. But a more devastating weapon against these Jaegers would be its tail. This particular titan would be more difficult to attack from the rear thanks to this weapon. We have seen this tail in action, sending Kong flying and even executing another titan. A much lighter Jaeger hit by the tip of this tail, for instance, would instantly be sliced down the middle. Getting hit in the thicker section would make this Jaeger fair game to get smashed to pieces, or worse, suffer a solid impact by the smaller dorsal plates. But will any of these weapons cause serious harm to Godzilla? Harm, yes, but serious, not likely. Godzilla's skin is capable of withstanding very high temperatures. Its thick hide helps mitigate deep flesh wounds and a body so dense that it would be proportionally difficult to penetrate given that these weapons are very light compared to the G-Man's dense body. Almost like trying to cut through lead with a knife. Although possible, it would take an immense force behind the strike to cut deep. Another challenge is that most of these blades used by these Jaegers are superheated, meaning that if they do cut, these would most likely cauterize the wound, stopping any bleeding. As we can see, bringing down Godzilla at any proximity would be a difficult task even for an entire squadron of Jaegers. Almost impossible without taking heavy losses. Although fighting against Godzilla could be necessary on some occasions, Godzilla doesn't voluntarily attack unless provoked. The final monster on this list will attack without provocation. Number 3. Jaegers vs. Mechagodzilla We left this one till the end because this confrontation is interesting in different aspects. In many ways, both Jaegers and Mechagodzilla are very similar, both being controlled by a pilot or pilots via neural handshake, or in Mechagodzilla's case, psionic link. Mechagodzilla's pilot would basically have to enter a transitory state in which his brain would intermingle with Mechagodzilla's AI, or more specifically, Ghidorah's consciousness. Both being very trippy processes, but not as trippy as kinda sharing a consciousness with a homicidal, three-headed, bloodthirsty killer. In this scenario, we will have to take into account the mechanical and technological aspect of this battle, or war against Mechagodzilla. The factors to watch out for are ranged weaponry, melee weapons, and psionic infrastructure. We are potentially entering the most brutal of these fights, given that Mechagodzilla is pure evil and is equipped with precisely the type of weaponry to exercise its brutality. Go check out this video to see what we're talking about. But first, let's draw up this scenario. A squadron of Jaegers advances to face off a massive 400-foot-tall Mechagodzilla. This titan almost doubles the height of the smaller members of this squadron, equipped with buzzsaw hands, industrial grinder jaws, spinning titanium blade tail, and a lethal proton scream. This battle will be nothing short of devastating. If you didn't know, Mechagodzilla's AI is built to resemble the G-Man's own thought processes, meaning that this standoff would probably resemble the one against Godzilla, with the mech figuring out that it would be better off by killing a good chunk of this squadron at a distance. This gets all the more interesting once this guy gets up and personal with the Jaegers. In terms of physical strength, we see that Mechagodzilla was up to par, if not stronger than a worn-out Godzilla and Kong at the end of GVK. Its supercharged punch was enough to send Godzilla through skylines and its tail impacts enough to smack Kong to the ground. Jaegers? 
Easy, except that an evil pair of pilots would humiliate these Jaegers. This animal's strong forelimbs would literally dismember the Jaegers one by one, resisting any missile barrages or impacts inflicted by less dense weapons. But the most devastating weapon of all is its scythed tail. One pierce of these tips is enough to put any of these smaller Jaegers out of commission in seconds. But how would humanity defeat Mechagodzilla? Although it has become clear that beating this mech with Jaegers is almost impossible, we must remember that Mechagodzilla was also human-built, and that there are also other forces at play here. Eh, uh, no, not like this, though. Up in the heights of outer space, there is supposedly a satellite which transmits psionic signals or commands back down to the mech. This network allows the pilot and Ghidorah to control the mech remotely without them having to be housed inside the mech itself, meaning that a well-targeted missile strike to any of these two locations would cause necessary disruptions for this thing to lose contact, lag, or even shut the whole thing down. Jaegers fortunately don't require a satellite uplink to relay commands, which is their most important edge against this particular mech. But shutting down Mechagodzilla is not guaranteed. On the contrary, if this network's architecture was built in such a way that it allowed it to go rogue instead of shutting down, humanity would have instigated an even bigger problem by having to deal with Ghidorah's consciousness as the one and only pilot of this killing machine. Do you think humanity can stand a chance against any of these kaiju? How do you think Jaegers would fare against some non-alpha titans in the MonsterVerse? Hit that subscribe button and follow us for more content on your favorite monsters, kaiju, and more. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.